Welcome back to the Hearthstone Championship Tour Europe Winter Preliminaries. I'm Robert Wing, once again joined on the desk by Saad Olsevij, and this time, my Valentine Rexar. Uh, I search land high and low for someone to accept, and uh, finally Rexar, someone who finally gets me. At least someone will have Europe. Uh, face is the place, but today, love is the place. <laughs> and here, uh, can hear all the people agreeing in the back. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right, so we just witnessed Cereza uh, go ahead and secure a hard-fought spot in the uh, Winter Championship next month. And uh, watching that series from the back, it was a really, really good one. He played it very well. Uh, not super surprised, though. Just strong plays all around, understood what he had to do to win. So, Sato, obviously you casted that. Any further thoughts on it? No, just generally overall very, very impressed with, with Cereza, especially with his, his freeze mage play. He really managed to navigate, you know, found found his outs, figured out his two-turn lethals, his three-turn lethals, what his percentages were, all these sorts of things that freeze mage is very much about, and just navigated it really, really well, and uh, a deserving qualifier, I think. Right, Savij, we were watching in the back. Uh, yeah, a, lot okay. of, a lot of moments we were kind of like, ooh. But, yeah, there's yeah. A, a lot of uh, interesting moments there, but uh, overall, a really good series. And I believe the next one is also going to be a good one. There's more Curse of Rafam action. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, speaking of Curse of Rafam, uh, this next match uh, will feature Jambri, who we haven't seen on stream just yet, versus Tars. And Tars was a player uh, we saw earlier, had a kind of innovative approach to Warlock, had that Curse of Rafam in his uh, Zoo deck, which uh, we established probably a counter to Freeze Mage. Right. Jamber now, there's some really interesting stuff to talk about with him. So he made it this far by finishing 15th on the NA ladder, and that's how he got into this. Hearthstone is actually the first card game he's ever played, and get this, this is actually the first tournament he's ever played in. He said he had no real expectations, just showed up, decided he was gonna, you know, play in a local fireside gathering, see how far he got, and he's made it to the top 16 and is one series away from the Winter Championship next month. How crazy is that, Saddle? It's absolutely insane. Just, we've seen a, a large majority of upsets between players today, and honestly, we kind of have that sort of David and Goliath thing going on here, because although Tars isn't a huge household name, he is a guy that has won a DreamHack. He's won DreamHack France. So we've got a guy entering his first tournament up against a DreamHack champion. On top of that, it is, it's just a guy with no card game experience right. before Hearthstone. Like, it's huge uphill battle for him, but he's obviously shown a great deal of natural aptitude to Hearthstone to be able to pick it up this quickly and be this deep in the bracket. Yeah, what a story it would be. First tournament ever, the biggest one this year so far. If he manages to qualify to the top eight, that might not be all of it. He might even be able to take it all down. Right, and that said, we see that Jamber for his decks has brought mid-range Druid, Paladin, and Aggro Shaman. So this is a real ladder champion story. These are the three decks that when you New season starts, you're like, all right, I'm just going to get to Legend. These are the three decks that are just, you know, super fast. You kind of know whether you're or not you're going to win immediately. And Tars is obviously playing a little bit more unconventional decks, as we saw earlier. So there we go. right into game one here, and we see Jambra <laughs> opening up with that Agro Paladin versus Tars playing that Zoo. And uh, Curse of Rafam in the opening hand. This is, okay, <laughs> Saddle, yes. what do you think about this? How does this uh, play into Agro Shaman? Uh, <laughs> um... Well, it is going to have to be an option between taking damage and developing minions with tempo. You are going to have to invest that two mana if you get given it, um, not developing minions. And the way that Zoo is going to play this matchup against Face Shaman is a race. So if you make them make that decision between damage and tempo, but still, not a very, very strong card. Definitely not good enough to keep <laughs> in your opening hand. Um, so I'm not surprised to see him toss it away. And honestly, he'll probably be happy if he doesn't draw it. Yeah, I mean, there is this small chance that the jump ray will overload enough that he won't be able to get rid of it. And that in that case, it would be at least four damage and still requires that two mana. But realistically, just throw it away and hope to never see it again. It's not for this matchup. Doing some basic math here. If that sits in his hand for 15 turns, Tars wins the game. Well, wow. not anymore, because he just took <laughs> Druid Hero Power, which in fact gives him one life per turn, Rob. So. We've complicated the map, yeah. This is getting crazy. Yeah. Uh, speaking of crazy, Jamer's got a pretty sick opening start there. He's got that Totem Golem for turn two. Uh, unfortunately, that won't allow him to play Horse Rider, but he does have the Horse Rider for possibly the turn after, or if he feels he needs to trade into something like a Knife Juggler or a Flame Imp. Yeah, both players with almost as good as it gets when it comes to starting hands. Maybe the Tunnel Truck would have been slightly better than the Finley, but still pretty good starting out with the one drop. Yeah, Rob talked about the, the strong start from the Shaman, but honestly, this is, as you said, extremely strong for the Zoo as well. When, whenever you get to hide a Flame Imp behind a Void Walker as an opening, you now get to dictate where that Flame Imp goes. Do I want it to go face? Do I want it to take out the minion? Right, so 
The way Aggro Shaman plays, uh, while it obviously has the potential to chain together some spells for high burst damage later in the game, it actually plays very much a ground assault game from the get-go, which is that it wants to get the chip damage in with the totem golems, with the uh, tunnel trogs, and these kind of minions that will allow it to equip the doom hammer, play the stuff like lava bursts. It plays very much, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, a uh, player by the name of LBYS made a mage deck, yes. where it's just a matter of like, you basically just keep drawing, keep drawing, keep drawing, right. and chain together the spells, but it needs to get to that point right. before it finishes you off. So, Aggro Shaman, very much uh, troubled by, Vo by Voidwalker. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you said, that sort of aggro freeze mage, very, very similar parallels to this. You just have a couple of Lepanomes, a couple of loot hoarders early on, just to deal a little bit of chip damage, and then you start firing the burn up face, and that is a very similar game plan to aggro shaman. So being immediately behind on the board as he found himself there against the flame imp puts yeah. him in a pretty unfavorable position. Using the lava shock for two mana, it's a tempo loss, and this is a heavily tempo based matchup, so he's a little bit on the back foot right now. He, he had the option to also go Totem Golem instead of that Lava Shock, but with two Lava Shocks in his hand, it, he has more options for the next turn, and also no Overload. Right, so while this deck is called Aggro Shaman, uh, obviously it has the potential to just unleash a whole bunch of damage over the course of one to two turns. It's still one of those decks that needs to fight for board, especially if the taunts are up, you can't really get around those. And uh, Zoo presents a lot of minions that have the potential to do very nasty things, and you definitely want to get rid of those and get those off the board quickly so that you can start doing damage to base. Right, if you try to play it in a way where you don't trade us the Shaman, you're gonna be in trouble fairly quickly, because, mostly because of Defender of Argus, because, well, obviously, the Shaman, uh, the Warlock player in that case can keep going for face while you can't. Right. People underestimate the complexity of playing outright face aggro quite a lot. Sometimes it's not just kill your opponent, it's kill your opponent the turn before they kill you, which is a much more complex proposition because you have to really figure out the trades and limiting your opponent's options and making sure that you just have that one extra point of damage than they do. Right. And uh, obviously, there's kind of uh, this idea, this very pervasive idea in communities uh, that aggro decks don't really take a lot of brain power to play. Right, right. There are certainly some matches, and I've played a fair few of them, especially with Face Hunter, where you know you just get those curves and you just go right and you win those games. It's just three or four turns, you're pushing lethal, hoppers come out, but yeah. there are a lot of situations where aggro decks, I would actually uh, wager, bold opinion here, mm -hmm. that some games there, it's more difficult to play something like aggro shaman versus something like control warrior, where just like kill the minions, kill the minions, kill the minions, gain health, play Alexstrasza. I mean, y you've opened Pandora's box here, <laughs> Rob. This is a debate that's, that's old as time. I suggest that we just kind of leave that one to one side for now. Uh, what I'm hearing, Saddle, is that you're hitting escape concede on this <laughs> argument, but we, okay, can, that's fine. we can pick this one up later. Uh, definitely a, a high point of contention. But hey, I wrote an article that got me a ton of hate on Reddit defending aggro, so I'm actually on your side here. I'm just saying, let's not talk about it. Sure, okay? sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's surprising there's a lot of trading to do. There's uh, some exceptions. Maybe the Hunter is uh, very keen on going face and never trading, but that's mostly because of the hero power. Right. Other classes don't have access to that kind of uh, source of damage. Except if you get a Finley and get the Hunter Hero from that. <laughs> That's a really good point. And uh, speaking of good points here, Defender of Argus in the Hand of Tars, we discussed this earlier, how much, pr how many fits this can give the Aggro Shaman. And it's something where Jammer's Hand is a little bit clunky. He's got that Rock Biter, but without the Doom Hammer, it's not going to do a ton of damage. He's got Lava Burst and that second Lava Shock, so he's still kind of at the point where he would like to get more minions. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't have drawn those minions, Defender of Argus could give him real problems. Well, that was so aggressive with the Power of Elming. I was expecting maybe to maybe see uh, an attack into the Totem Golem and then Defender of Argus afterwards. But I mean, this works just fine. Right, I think the theory here is that he deals with the Totem Golem outright, and we're not really at the stage of the game where the Face Shaman player is going to be trading with minions from hand. You know, they might still be trading from board at this point, yeah. and tra picking up value trades, but he's probably fairly confident these two minions stick around on the board for next turn, and he can just play the Argus with initiative. Absolutely, like, no matter when, the Argus will be really good. In this matchup, it's uh, one of the key cards. Personally, I would even consider keeping it in the starting hand against the Shaman. I think it's so important. Right, so obviously Zoo has kind of surged back. There was a point where Zoo was perceived as being one of the weaker decks, and League of Explorers comes out, it gets some additional tools in Dark Peddler, it gets some tools in Brand Bronzebeard, and, and kind of takes back its position as being really one of those top 10 decks. So question I would pose to you guys, Saddle first, do you believe it's more to do with the cards from League of Explorers or the meta surrounding it? It's a combination of both. You, you definitely can't uh, underestimate the power of Dark Peddler. That thing is basically an early game curve in a single card. If you have Dark Peddler in your mulligan, you have so much security in terms of relying on being able to draw a reasonable curve for the first three to four turns. Um, but also we've seen mid-range Druid get incredibly powerful recently and become a really dominant meta deck. And Zoo is just one of the best natural counters to that kind of thing. Right, right. Svij, any thoughts on that? 
Uh, I was I was looking at the game. I was a little bit focused <laughs> on that, but I was just like trying to go through all the action. I jump break going for a lava shock on a one one. I'm a little bit worried for him uh, whether or not he's going to have enough damage if he doesn't pick up a Doom Hammer fast. Right, I think the Nerubian was good for Jamber because obviously it represents some potential issues down the road, but on that turn it's not putting a lot of power on the board. Uh, he obviously doesn't know that Tars has Defender of Argus, but that is something that at least on that turn didn't seem all that menacing. And Leopard Gnome off the top <laughs> around turn six is not necessarily where you want to be, especially when your opponent still has 26 health. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> It's just the Warlock, the life totals are fairly even right now, but the Warlock has access to drawing those extra cards, while the Shaman doesn't have the same luxury, so I think things are going quite well for Tars right now. Right, if, if uh, Jamra had picked up, say, the Warlock Hero Power off his Finley, we might have a more even contest where they're both drawing and playing um, two cards per turn, and the Zoo is going to kind of have to play the ball control, and, and Shaman is just trying to burst it out, but with the Shaman so quickly running out of resources and only really uh, ancestral knowledge in the deck to refill, we're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, just looking at it right now, My there's so many draws for Jan Bre that do almost nothing in this particular situation. Yeah, we saw the Brain Bronze Beard up the top, and obviously Tars could have held that, or held the uh, Defender of Argus the next turn, just really pump the up greed. that egg. The, the greedy play, but yeah. uh, even though he's ahead, this is still one of those things you take very seriously, uh, as we said earlier. This is win or go home. Win, you go to the European uh, Winter Championship, lose, and you know, you're watching from home. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lightning bolt. <laughs> this is looking so rough <laughs> right now. What do you do? Do you start lightning bolting a defender of Argus? I, I don't know. Like, how, how do you climb back from this? I guess the Doom Doomhammer top deck uh, is, is like the closest thing to hope for. What you do is you change the construction of your deck to the Colento version, where you're running Elemental Destruction, and that's how you uh, get back into this one. But yeah, I actually like Hero Power and Pass if he chooses to do that. You just gotta. Hold on to that burn and hope something else develops. Maybe an ancestral knowledge comes up and gets you some cards. I mean, it's not something you can entirely rule out. He he may in fact be playing the old uh, Ellie Giggle destruction in his deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually don't know. It's quite possible it would be in there, but we have not seen anybody during this weekend be actually playing that version. No. I think it's slightly out of meta, so to say. It is a little bit, but it's really like the inclusion of elemental destruction in your deck really comes down to the, the point I made earlier about you know, aggro being a race. It's not just about damage, it's about a race. So if you can just reset a board state to neutral and you as the face deck are just far more likely to draw damage every turn after that than your opponent, then right. you put yourself in a very favorable uh, position. So I totally understand the dynamic of that being in the deck. But as you said, it seems to have forced its way out. And uh, Jambra <laughs> seems to have decided <laughs> that it's time. <laughs> oh man, well, where does he find the remaining 10 damage? Another Lava Burst and a oh Crackle. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, that's, that's just short of lethal. <laughs> it is. And he has a full board as well, so even tap into you know abusive or die wolf or something like that would not find him the damage that he needs. Power so, overwhelming though. Power overwhelming would do it, but like why why would you tap? I mean, I guess why would you tap, but also why wouldn't you tap? Like, what, what is he gonna draw that does eight damage? <laughs> right. I mean ancestral no, ans in, into yeah, ancestral knowledge into card card, but one of those cards would have to be lava shock, like, and he's already used both. both right. Crackle, yeah. crackle and the last lightning bolt. Last <laughs> crackle, last lightning bolt. Roll sure. a six. Right. <laughs> yeah, so Tars is going to take game one of that series. Uh, for John Bray, it's one of those situations where, again, Aggro Shaman incredibly powerful in its own right, but Zoo is just so consistent. That's what's made it so powerful recently is you're not really dealing with the I have two win conditions. You have the win condition of put stuff on the board, <laughs> win the board, win the game. It's a pretty solid win condition, in fact. Having stuff on the board <laughs> is quite good for winning games of Hearthstone. Ahead of your time, Saddle. Yeah, ahead of your time. This is the kind of high-level analysis you get <laughs> when I'm here. Yeah, in that game, Dars just got such a fast hand there to start things off with the Flame Imp and the Void Walker. I don't think there was much jump break could have done to actually win that game. There might be some small decisions that where he could have played slightly differently, but I don't think there was any way to win that one. I think one turn to possibly look at is that early turn where he played the Lava Shock over the Totem Golem. Mm. Obviously, he had the two Lava Shocks, and we agreed that the hand was clunky. It's certainly worth looking over, though, how much putting a 3-4 on the board would have possibly helped him to just get some muscle on there. Because, right. as we've said in the past, spells are powerful, spells are great, but you're not developing anything when you play one down. So, uh, yeah. other than that, though, I agree. He kind of just got to a point where, you know, the minions were coming down for Zoo. He wasn't getting anything like a Lightning Storm or any kind of area effect spell. So, yeah, it was an unfortunate game for John Bray, but still absolutely plenty of series. Yeah, so going to the next one, now uh, now Yambre, they, they both have the same classes remaining, except Yambre still with that Shaman. I wonder where, where the Shaman is going to find its win. Sorrel, do you know uh, how good is the Shaman against something like Secret Paladin? I 
as with many matchups, it kind of hinges on the, you know, do you get your Doomhammer? Do they get their Mysterious Challenger? It's a fairly even matchup is what that probably comes down to. It's who gets the strongest draw. Face Shaman, much like Face Hunter, can get to the point where the huge Secret Paladin boards aren't that impressive because they can just force damage to face. But again, Secret Paladin has a lot of cards like the Zoo with Defender of Argus that can shut that thing down. You know, Cog Hammer. Yeah, Cog like, Hammer is a big Cog one. Hammer, Blessing of King. You, know, you get both those things on the same minion, you suddenly have like this huge 9 9 taunt or something. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tough, but a, a strong early start. You know, if you get a 1 3 on turn one and you're able to curve out nicely, you can be competitive against their early draws. All right, so let's see what we get here. Game two. Wow, what is Wait, this? What? Novice Engineer. Okay, well, we have not seen any novice engineers from Paladin decks in this tournament before. And this Pretty looks to be Secret Paladin. We see the Redemption, Whoa. which is usually a dead giveaway, but we also see I Defender of Argus and Abusive Sergeant. I don't see the Synergy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm baffled. Yeah. yeah. Turn one Redemption, turn two Novice Engineer. Go! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, we don't know what else is Yambre is playing, and if there's... Whoa! <laughs> Dragon Eggs, two Blessing wow. of Kings, and a Tyrion Forger. And guys, I'm not well, smart enough to understand what's going on. Savish, you got anything? <laughs> Have you seen this right. before? I don't know what to say, except that I'm really excited to see what else is in there and how it's going to play out. Looks like a little bit of a rough start from, for Yambre. He does have that one drop, but it's a little bit early for Tyrion. I just want to say, I recently cast a, a tournament that was done live from the PAX floor, which was a kind of a casual open tournament. And we saw a, a lot of kind of decks like this popping up because it was just, you know, people at the convention popping up, playing playing a few casual games of Hearthstone in a tournament that was streamed. That's kind of what this looks like, except this guy is top 16 against a bunch of the best players in the world with it. Can, I was going to say, can we get replays? I want to see some of these matches. Yeah. How this goes, <laughs> I mean, you obviously know something is up right. when you see this. And the shade even comes out. Tar's like, I'm not even going to let this egg get any kind of value. I'm just going to hero power to do, just get rid of the 2-1. Egg's going down. He does reveal the shade, but from the Paladin, you're not expecting too much. It's a Jackie Chan, eat your heart out. Like, you can have Egg Druid all you want. We're <laughs> sat here playing Egg Paladin right now. Oh, I almost thought we were going <laughs> to see the coin redemption <laughs> for the Egg. Oh, man, that King's coin Kings is looking so good for Yampre for the next turn. And Tars, Tars is just thinking, uh, they don't train you to deal with this. <laughs> this is not something uh, in Hearthstone Academy, you're like, watch out for Egg Paladin. <laughs> yeah, and so, certainly not something you see every day. An interesting point, we have seen another uh, Paladin deck made by Cross, I believe it is. That's more secret Egg Paladin. But this, this just appears to be something completely different. We've seen both eggs. Um, I'm I've just gobsmacked. You said they, they don't train Tars to deal with this. No one's trained me to deal with this either. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening right now, but that coin Blessing of Kings is about to destroy some dreams right now. But I think this is an incredibly intelligent play from Tars. Plays out the tempo big game hunter, maybe just getting that read on the Blessing of Kings. And now he actually has a, a potential trade with the egg if he wants to use Savage Raw to clear. I think he has to. Uh, he's otherwise going to be falling too far behind. There are not that creative of a play, but it's the only one that he has. Absolutely. And just huge heads up play there from Tars. I was incredibly impressed when I watched his series earlier. And again, this is one of those hidden plays that um, some, sometimes people talk about where it doesn't seem like the right play to put a big game hunter on the board right there. But based on the situation and what he was expecting yep. in terms of the Blessing of Kings, it was necessary. After seeing the egg, I wouldn't be expecting to see too many big game hunter targets. Right. And also, if there's eggs, it's probably more of an aggressive list. So you can't really be holding, uh, holding on <laughs> too happened. much. It happened! We did it! Novice Engineer Redemption! I can't believe it. <laughs> I, I just... This... I did not expect to see this today when what? I woke up. Tars's eyebrows have totally told the story for me. He's like <laughs> seeing all these things. He's just like, what am I playing against? And the redemption comes down. There's no way if you're Tars, you can possibly expect this to be redemption with no, a novice no engineer way. on the board. Who does that? Avenge would make much more sense to this. If he knew what it was, I mean, he would probably, well, maybe even, maybe 10 also play that five drop because he has nothing else to play. But he <laughs> has to be thinking Avenge. Jamre's face is just like, yeah. I got him. Wow. I got this, eggs. This is just mind blowing. <laughs> I mean, I, so novice engineer, right? He's got eggs, uh, dragon eggs, Nerubian eggs, abusive sergeant, etc. In his deck. Just look at this. Right. Oh. What is happening? This is. I, 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 I don't know. But I'm going to try and finish my thought here. <laughs> I'm going to try and finish my thought, which is this. So he probably needs additional cycle, and he probably feels like you know just divine favor, which I assume is in the deck, isn't enough. Why novice engineer instead of loot hoarder? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
I like how last turn, you know, Tars is looking at his options. He sees the Lothab and the Druid of the Claw, and I feel like he just finally went to the options. Like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just making a 4 6 taunt. Knock yourself out. But Swipe is a pretty timely draw there. That's exactly what he wants. And for Jambra, it's not even that bad because you've got Muster sitting in hand. Yep. Right. And Tars, I believe, still doesn't have any information on this secret apart from the fact it's not repentance. So he's probably considering the various implications of the secrets here. And swiping the dragon egg, I believe, is going to bring the dragon egg back to life. <laughs> That's a zero one here. Oh my god. This is amazing. This, this is going oh, to be the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the collateral oh. gets dealt at the same time. So. Interesting. Oh, so much yeah, value. Of course, because the Imgang boss thing before was a bug. And right, oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yep. Oh, how good would that have been if it was the egg there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking you, of eggs, you wanted more eggs. We've got more eggs. Tars is like, no, I already had breakfast. Please stop. <laughs> Leave me alone with these eggs. All right, Jumper with his omelette. Just looking for a turn <laughs> seven, and then he has a theory to follow it up. Ah, oh, so I mean, lower third hero power seems reasonable. Keeper of the Grove, he may just be terrified out of his skin about eggs at this point, well, having seen what's happened. You've, okay, so you've seen one abusive sergeant, I believe. Mm -hmm. You've seen two blessing of kings. Yep. Maybe you're like keeper of Oldemon, second right. abusive. Like, what am I? Seal of champions? Question mark. Aldor peacekeeper, your egg up to a one. Can't be dumb. <laughs> uh, but I still, it would have been cool. I yeah, was, I, as I was saying that, I was like, you can't do that to your own minions, can no, you? No, you can't. Ah. Feels bad. All right, this is a big moment right here, because Yambri has to find something he can play. Well, well right. uh, another chance. I mean, in this situation, it's better than Loot Hoarder, because he's going to get something oh, yeah. that he gets to play immediately. Like so I guess there's <laughs> egg on my face. <laughs> oh, no, stop. Oh. What? What is that, Sonal? No. <laughs> Oh, man. What if Tars... Okay, so Tars has obviously proven, that I think, of most of the players I've seen so, thus far, to just be an extremely high IQ player. Like, he understands not necessarily what to do with his hand, but also what's going on in his opponent's hand. And you have to know that card on the left is probably a Tyrion, right? Because you've seen the Novice Engineer come down. That card has been in there a long time. That's a really good point. Almost any other card would have been played instead of uh, that, <laughs> that one there, right there, so... It has to be eight or more mana. A lot of oh, effects does stop hard. some spells, but it has been there for a very long time, like you mentioned. Although, I mean, oh, we just oh. we just spent the time bigging it up, but he, if he <laughs> thinks that card is Tyrion, there is no way he makes that Keeper of the Grove play here. Oh yeah, Yambre getting a little bit excited about seeing the Keeper go away <laughs> just before the Tyrion hits the board. He's like, everything's working according to plan, and well, I think we're about to put our faith in the light. Yeah, I that's where it goes, we, and uh, oh. Tars is not going to be happy to see this. So, question if you're Jambre here, are you trading or are you just going for it now? Um, I mean, I'd love to put at least two to face. Um, and plus, since the fact the Druid can gain the extra armor anyway, you know, I really want to set up a situation where this this, this Ashbringer three times to face is lethal. Right. Um, so I really like pushing face here. Yeah, I like face as well. One swipe has already been casted, and if there, if there was a swipe from Tars' side, it would have been casted last time. Right, so he has the combo here, which this is a game changer, right? for Tars, because once his Tyrion goes down, the Paladin has damage over time, obviously over a couple turns, but it's not necessarily going to do uh, as much in the interim compared to Druid combo. And this is the situation oh. we talked about, but never mind. I'll just hold that thought for a second. That Keeper top deck is huge. That is essentially destroy. It's heal for 15, essentially, over the course of the game, yeah. destroying that Ashbringer. Um, but the thought, the thought previously being, this situation we talked about before, uh, the race situation of an aggro deck. Druid is one of the best decks at threatening to race an aggro deck back because you can't avoid their minions because the threat of Savage Roar just becomes too intense. Right, and that Keeper helps a lot dealing with that Tyrion Forging. But the good thing for Yambre is that he does have the Defender Barker, so he's probably going to be able to protect himself from the, from the combo. Or is that even lethal? It just might be lethal. He has 10 damage. Oh, yeah, he's oh, trading. Okay. He's trading since 5 to face. It's one off right now with the defender, right? Ooh, competitive spirit, too. This is a secret paladin, but not the one we're used to. I, almost, <laughs> no. I even wonder if Mysterious Challenge is in here. It, it has to be. It has right? to be. You don't yeah. play this many paladins. I can understand with all the eggs if you just shove some Avengers in your deck. Sure, that would make sense. But right. if you're playing the full package, you have to be playing Challenger as well. Oh, Defender of Argus, another card. We were talking about egg activators earlier. Mm -hmm. This is another one. Unfortunately, that egg is a silence. Nobody home. All right. Mm -hmm. So Defender of Argus comes down here on the Tyrion and the 1-1. One -one, so you, you're My getting... Oh. oh, no. Oh. 
That is an ambitious That's brave. Play. I mean, okay, we okay. all freak out at that play because we see what's about to happen. Right. From Jambray's perspective, he's staring at two cards in his opponent's hand. Yeah. Is he saying, well, you know, those two cards are exactly Force of Nature and Savage Roll? No, probably not. But maybe it doesn't matter like how, how he does it because he's kind of forced to attack with the Tyrion into the low tip anyway, so they could only have two toughness. So Very true. That's a really good point as well. That just might do it unless he uses the Tyrion to kill off the minion. All right, super good Hearthstone guys on the desk. Is this enough to kill him? Yes. <laughs> yes, that is lethal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We've got it. Uh, so what the? F oh, he can't attack with face into the noble sack though. Does that make a difference? Uh, it should still be. So face has to go lethal. Hold so on. Yeah, he has to inefficiently deal with each of these taunts because he can't Maybe. use his face for anything. He can't use his face, so. So four damage has to go in, four damage has to go in. He has eight. No, he's still fine. We're still fine. We're fine. It's okay. Crisis averted. We're fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that does it. <laughs> as, as we piece it together very confusing. slowly but yeah. surely, Tars is going to take a 2-0 lead against Jambray, <laughs> but what a deck. Uh, I, obviously, <laughs> Tars, Tars wins. Great. He's up 2-0. I want to talk about the Zeg deck. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Uh, that was certainly not the Paladin deck that we were expecting no. to see, but it was really cool. If he curved out slightly better, maybe found a, a bit, slightly better play for his turn 7, I think he would have been able to take it down. And even then, you know, sure he lost the game, but we were so focused on working out whether or not he survived Druid combo that turn, we completely missed the fact he was just one damage off yeah. lethal right there at the end. He was so close with what you just said was a pretty poor draw overall. Right. I, I want to point out, too, that this was a guy who, who got to this point through ladder rankings, has never played in a tournament before at all. No community cups, no majors. And so when I saw that Paladin deck, I'm thinking, for sure, this is Seeker Paladin or this is Midrange Paladin, because that's what you would play on the ladder. But right. obviously, crazy deck. Uh, we're a little stunned by it. We want to hear what you at home have to say about it. <laughs> tweet at Play Hearthstone. Use a, ha use a hashtag HCT. Tweet at us. We just want to hear what you think about this deck and if you've ever seen it before, because uh, we never have. But uh, unfortunately, Jumper down 0-2. Yeah. So, Tars is one game away from clenching his spot at the Europe Winter Championship, so do you believe in miracles? The positive thing about that Egg Paladin losing is that we're going to see it again! And yeah. oh there's the challenger! There is the challenger. <laughs> so, he does get the mini bot here <laughs> early. Uh, he's like not looking too nervous. Smiles there a little bit. Yeah, I, I mentioned earlier, John Bray wasn't expecting to win this, right? He, he basically said, I'm going to go as far as I can in this. He's already made it to the, the point where he has made some money. He's made $2,500 at this event, and he's smiling. He is just all smiles. He's having a great time. <laughs> How do you not smile if you're playing Ick Paladin and you make 2,500 doing so? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd be <laughs> smiling. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, again, I really just, I hope there's videos somewhere of the rest of these matches he's played because I desperately want to watch them and see how those games went. But uh, Tar's all business. He, he's been very stoic throughout these games. And uh, again, very much concentrating eye on the prize. John Bray's having a little bit more fun, but we see the minibot versus minibot. Yeah, though. opening, both players dropping minibot. Coin minibot answered by a minibot. Um, bring on standard, I suppose, is the, is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shield's failing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dorsey's Dar hand is pretty much the nuts right now. But uh, Jan Bray also curving out pretty nicely. That egg, he needs an activator for it. If he finds Let one, it's really think. healthy. How do you feel, Savitz, about going for the Noble Sack Avenge play this turn over just the regular play with the Hornet Creeper? That's interesting. That's actually quite powerful. Mm -hmm. But um, there is always that risk that there's silence somewhere. So maybe sure. it's a little bit too risky because the silence would uh, effectively take out both the Divine Shield and the Avenge buff. Elven Archer? What am I watching? No way. <laughs> just no way. Is this... That? Did he just start playing Hearthstone like last week? Is that why that's in there? Just doesn't have a replacement for Elven Archer? Like, this is nuts. It's it could be another activator for Egg, I, for I, the for I the Dragon Egg that makes the the two one. I don't even sure. I mean, uh, okay, what? Jamre is the hero we deserve. <laughs> I'm still baffled. That is a real-life Elven Archer that was not summoned from a Dark Peddler. That it's, is in his deck. You're, you're not I, watching I can't Arena. believe my eyes. I can't believe my eyes right now. Uh, what is happening? This uh, is just baffling stuff right now. This deck is just so exciting. No idea which card hmm. he's going to draw next. It just could be anything. It's Stormpike Commando next turn. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, question to you guys, uh, beginning with Solo here. Mm. You're in a tournament. Right. You've played all the way up to top 16. Uh, you're very focused on winning. And then you see this deck. What is your reaction? I, yeah, I was going to make a comment on that earlier when I was I was asking Savitz about the double secret play, and you know he said you know you're not sure whether there's going to be a silence, etc. That's the point. Like 
You don't know how to react to this deck. You're worried about taking risks because you don't know what to put your opponent on. There's just kind of all sorts of craziness going on here. And Competitive Spirit just goes off there procking on a solo egg. Like, what? How do you react to this? I, uh, <laughs> I, still don't know. I'm just staring at what's oh, happening. I wish I'm you guys, at the I wish you guys could have seen Savitsu's face right there. It was glorious. I'm that staring was... at the Elven Archer and just I don't know what what is happening. The best part was you were asking how to react, and Savitsu's <laughs> just dumbfounded, just staring at the Elven Archer. That's that's basically the correct reaction here. And we see Giant Egg here, uh, big old five four, can do a reasonable job contesting the board, but value muster here to stop the fun. Indeed. Yeah. You've been waiting so long to say value muster. It's, it's that song. Brian yeah. and I have just been back in the backstage singing that song, just uh, the perfect curve. Yep. Uh, curse those catchy content creators and their good music. Yeah, that video is pretty fantastic, I have to say. But back in the game here, a few shots hit into the egg. I don't think he's going to have too much interest in interacting with it this turn. He may go for the creeper pop, but I don't really see the merit in it. I think this is we're just pushing face this turn. Yeah, I agree with you. It doesn't really make things any better for him to pop it right now. It seems likely that the uh, egg is going into the juggler next turn anyway. want to point out, John Bray can play Defender of Argus and then an on-curve Elven Archer. Well, wow. He has a curve Hopefully out for not both in of that these. order. Here we go. Preferably not in that I order. I will see Thar's right. face when the Elven Archer hits the board. Uh, uh, Here uh. we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> So Avenge hits, huh. and <laughs> the Argus here is going to allow a value trade into the Knife Juggler. And the unfortunate side is that the Avenge means there is a value trade now back from the 4-3 into the 2-2. So eh, that whole situation kind of comes out in the wash, and the Competitive Spirit Blessing of King's Curve here is not terrible leading into the Challenger. No, not bad at all. It's somewhat perfect. This Competitive Spirit is almost guaranteed to go off anyways, if he, just ha if he happens to play second one. Probably not. It's quite uncommon to see more than one of those. Right. Was there ever a point, because I cannot remember, if Elven Archer was... Elven Archer was played in the Warlock Zoo at some point, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. In in a meta where there was a lot of zoo mirrors, for example, Elven Archer was actually quite a common card. Yeah, right, that's so right. what if this is some kind of Paladin Zoo deck? Ooh. Uh, I mean, we actually had... Uh, a, a deck earlier that I was calling Paladin Zoo because I believe the original list came up from Game King and that's what he called it. Um, and that's a, a very, very different deck from this one. It's just uh, very, very minion heavy, but it's buff heavy, sure, but it's not all in on that kind of egg plan that this one seems to be. Um, this seems to, if, if you're going to draw the parallel, it does seem to be with Egg Druid. You're very much all in on getting those really annoying boards and then using buffs to just leverage huge advantages out of Nerubian Eggs and Dragon Eggs. Right. Jampre, once again here, turn six and no Mysterious Challenger available. That's really what he wanted mm. to play, but unfortunately that's not possible. Just looking at them, he's a noble sacrifice and an abusive search. Yeah, not too many great options this turn. And he's, he's hesitating here, trying to work out what that secret is going to be. Uh, turns out that it is uh, the competitive spirit. So in, in terms of how he chooses to interact with this board, it's not a, really a big deal, but he's just working out the various implications of Avenge, Redemption, etc., all the things it could be. And he's just going to play his, his fairly sad little turn here and uh, hope that he doesn't get blown out too hard by what this secret is. And uh, there we go, competitive spirit. So that, uh, that Silverhand recruit now up to five power and uh, Mysterious Challenger from the other side. <laughs> John Bray just kind of shakes his head. He's like, where's mine? Where's mine? <laughs> so yeah, my deck is weird, but I have just as many mysterious challenges in here as he does. <laughs> we assume. <laughs> yeah, well, we assume. Yeah. Yeah. Although I would be surprised if there wasn't. I would. All right, so uh, looking at the board now, Tars is just in a very commanding space. And unfortunately, John Bray's on turn seven, so he cannot quite get down that Tyrion Forge ring. Keeper of Ultimon, not a bad pickup, but there's kind of a really just too many good targets here. Yeah, that Tyrion is so good for next turn, and Keeper of Ultimate is very nice for this turn, but the problem is that he's down to 10 HP. I, it might I'm, even be impossible for yeah, him Yeah, I'm not convinced he can live. If the Avenge hits perfectly, maybe, because he can keep her, you know, say, if the Keeper hits the 6-6 six, six with the Avenge on it as well, I still don't think that's enough. I think he's in a, in a world of trouble here. I, I think we're done here, but let's just see how it, uh, how it plays out. So there goes the 1-1 one, one attacking into the Noble Sacrifice. Then the Avenge is going to happen. Then the Keeper of Ultaman on whatever is Avenged. So the Avenge... Ah. Ah. 
That's not great. Redemption yeah. as well is the last secret, so we get the full package of secrets that uh But with that weapon, so even if he gets the, the, the spider down to three attack, the Mr. Challenger is still six damage right. and that weapon yep. exactly then. Absolutely, so there is no way out here. He's just gonna face down lethal on board and uh, Jambre clearly had some fun here. You know, you talked about it, Rob. He wasn't expecting to do well. He's probably exceeded his expectations, taken down some money, but unfortunately, his, uh, his illustrious run has come to an end here at the hand of Tars, who, for me, has been one of the breakout players of this event so far. Yeah, so well played by Jambre. We see it. Tars is super excited. He really wants to go to the Europe Winter Championship, and he's going to get his wish. He's top eight now, and uh, as much as it's fun to talk about Jambre's uh, very unique egg deck, I have to focus on Tars. Oh, he yeah. is the winner. He played extremely well, and uh, not someone who was lacking in innovation himself. He brought that Curse of Reform. Uh, which, you know, a lot of players wouldn't think, like, oh, I'm going to run this card, but Tars did. He's won it and, you know, very happy for him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So it's a lot of confidence to bring Curse of Farm in a deck to a tournament like this. He played very well in the first match today. He played very well in the second one. Well deserved. It's been a theme somewhat running through the tournament is people uh, teching matchups to improve them against Freeze Mage. We've seen IMB Cows slipped into Secret Paladin to improve the matchup, Curse of Rafarm in Tarz's Zoo deck for the same purpose. So there's obviously a meta call from the people that have done well in this tournament that Freeze Mage is going to be popular and they need to shore up their bad Freeze Mage matchups to have a chance against that deck. Right, and what I really like about this from Tarz is it shows that he is aware he has a ban that you know he can use and he has access to, and clearly deciding he's not going to ban our Freeze Mage, right. but he wants to do is improve his matchups against that deck. So it's kind of like a second level of strategy to it, and really impressive by that. Hope to see a lot more from Tarz. Now, Jambre, this is the kind of performance where you make a name for yourself, right? You know, Jambre is not going to go to the top eight. He's not going to be at the Europe Winter Championship, but for his first tournament in the winter season, who knows what spring holds for him, and I, I can't wait to see more from this guy. I'm hugely impressed with, with Jambre. You know, sure, he played fine, but just the innovation, the, the the guts to bring a deck like that to a tournament. You know, you saw he was playing under the UK flag there, which means he's playing from, from London at the moment. I'm not sure if he lives in the UK. He's not a player I'm familiar with, but if he does live in the UK, I'm going to his house as soon as I get back, and I'm going to get him to build every deck for me from now on. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> that there's somebody out there who's making fun of the Elven Archer and all that, but he made it 2,500 playing that. How cool is it? Uh, it's extremely cool. And you know who else is extremely cool? It's Dan over in the host area, and he's ready with an interview. Nailed it. Shucks. Thanks very much, guys. That's right. I'm going to be joined by Tars in just a second to talk to him about qualifying for the Winter Finals, but most importantly about some of these really odd choices that seems to be going through these decks these days. Not sure what's going on, so let's go ahead and hop on the line with Tars right now. Uh, who's hailing from France, at least playing from France. Tars, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. So let's go ahead and just talk about some of the, the biggest obvious questions is, why, why on earth are you playing Curse of Reform in your Warlock deck? Uh, because I was expecting a lot of Freeze Mage. Uh, because Conquest with one ban, I, I thought a lot of people would ban Druid and play like Freeze Mage, Murloc Paladin, and I wanted to have a, a backup with Curse of Rafa, but it didn't go as expected, but <laughs> that was the idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, almost, almost. There's a couple games where it looked like maybe you had a chance to, but it's still really sweet to see you qualify. Was that your idea, or uh, was it another, uh, you know, idea with, within the French community? Because the French community in general is really well known for creating their very cool decks. Uh, it was my idea. I, I practiced a, a lot with my teammates, and I was like eight to one against Free Mage with the, with the zoo, so I was very, very wow. confident. And yeah, <laughs> that's absurd. 88% win rate <laughs> against Freeze Mage with Zoo. Uh, I'm, that's unheard of. But uh, I mean, if it works for you, clearly it got you this far indeed. So congratulations on that. I want to ask you about your opponent, uh, you know, Hombre, who brought an Egg Paladin deck. Uh, what, what was going through your mind as you saw it? Were you familiar with this deck at all? Uh, like. When I used Keeper on turn 7 and see Tyrion next turn, I was like, oh my god, what did I do? <laughs> and yeah, I was thinking, what is it? Maybe, maybe Up Goblin? I didn't know as well. Uh, did, does he have uh, Divine Favor? Uh, I was really unsure, but yeah. I think br bringing a deck like this in a, in a tournament in Conquest is really, really good. L like, that's crazy. Uh, I'm so happy to play against a deck like this, that's fun. Really, really cool. Yeah, that deck was quite the yolk. 
so talking about actually how you're going to go to the winter finals, can you explain like how you got here and you know how excited you are to meet us in California in a month? Uh, really, I I started uh, f to be full time full time on Houston in October, and like now four months later, I qualify for PGL in in uh, Bucharest, and the same week to the winter finals. So I don't realize yet. Like, I, I'm living a dream right now. So, yeah. I really don't know. That's, that's crazy. That's awesome, man. That's right. You're living the dream, and you're going to the Winter Finals in just a few weeks. Congratulations yeah. again. Do you have any final words, shout-outs, maybe a Valentine's Day message to someone special out there? <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank you for my girlfriend to, to help me, to be behind me always. Yeah, and also to my teammates who helped me a lot to practice, to my team Melty, to everyone who support me, like, Really, thank you. Thank you all. You're welcome, man, because I'm part of everybody as well. Congratulations. We'll see you in a month here in California. You are the sixth person to go to the Winter Finals for the Hearthstone Championship Winter Tour. And that's going to be it, guys, with Tars for now. We're going to see him in a little bit. You can see how happy he is, just overjoyed that his hard work has paid off. You know, he's been playing a lot of tournaments in the past. And the French community is pretty isolated from even when the Western community. You know, they do their own tournaments. Sometimes you just don't really hear about some of their players. But I, be I firmly believe that they have some of the best that Hearthstone has to offer. Uh, we want to ask you guys what you guys thought about that as well. So go ahead and tweet at us at Play Hearthstone by using the hashtag HCT. HCT, and if you're on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash Hearthstone. We still have a couple more matches to find out our, who is our round of eight players, so don't go anywhere. When we come back, more Hearthstone action here for the Hearthstone Championship Tour.